um, behind the screen. I left the radio station late, so I was rushing here. And um, because my program on Friday is finished at seven o'clock. And so um, the good news is I only live 10 minutes from the radio station. So that's mm -hmm. a blessing. So I was able to get uh, home and, and get myself sorted without too much problems. Um, we're coming to the end of our week together. Um, I, I've been doing three weeks of prayers this week um, because of Zoom. They, it's, it's weird. Um, so I did the Stanbridge School, the Eden School um, week of prayers and your week of prayer. So um, we finished the two schools this morning. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed. And now we're, we're wrapping up with you guys. So hopefully uh, I can have a Sabbath in the morning. Amen. I've recorded my sermon for the morning already um, for where I'm preaching. So they already have that. So that's a blessing. They can upload it and, and, and do it. And I can, I can sit back and just enjoy it. I may even take a, a bike ride. Um, um, I've got a little bike that I ride around Watford. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the park and just sit there and watch the ducks and do all that kind of thing on a Sabbath afternoon before my radio show starts at 5 p.m. If you're doing nothing tomorrow, well, feel free to come on the radio at uh, 5 p.m. And, uh, and tune in and be blessed. We are talking to young people. Funny enough, we're talking to young people. And um, we have um, Nathaniel Messiah, um, um, who has got some awesome YouTube videos. I play for my students all the time um, to motivate them. And then I've got um, Referral from Cornerstone Church and Danielle from Cornerstone Church. And we're talking everything youth, why youth don't stay in church, why youth need this, you know, the typical stuff. So we're going to argue with them. I got my points of view. So, um, and uh, tell them how terrible they are and all that kind of stuff. So feel free, five to seven tomorrow on Adventist Radio London. Anyway, let's get into the, the, the message tonight. Um, if you've got a Bible with you, let's go to the word of God and... Um, and let's read Joshua. Um, da, 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 da. I'm looking for the scripture I want to be. Uh, that's where I want to go here. Um, it's Joshua chapter one. And I'm not sure exactly because I have it uh, cut out. I think it's verses six through nine is where I am. Um, Joshua um, chapter one, verses six through nine. And, um, and we're dealing with, we're dealing tonight with a... a <laughs> Boy, one of my favorite scriptures in the world to speak on. So we're dealing with it. Lord, I will go strengthen me. Lord, I will go strengthen me is what we're dealing with tonight. It is our powerful scripture. And um, I hope you're ready to rumble. Um, and, and listen, I notice there's only one person in the chat that's been saying amen. This is my final night with you guys. Amen. And so if you are moved any part of the process. And if you're normally conservative and you don't say amen in church, this is a good way to begin the process of just writing it. You don't have to say it. No one's going to hear you. You won't sound Pentecostal. Trust me. You will sound Adventist if you say nothing. But you can put it in the chat and it really encourages the preacher because I can see it at the corner of my eye. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. So just encourage me because I'm speaking to, to, to muted people. Um, there's a sermon in there somewhere speaking to muted people. I got to preach that that can preach. Um, so if you got a Bible with you, let's go to the text and, um, and let's, let's, let's do this. Um, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people into inherited land. I swore to their ancestors that I will give them be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the laws of my servant Moses. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Wow. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then, hmm. You will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong, courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. If you don't feel that text, you got a lot of problems in your life. Father, speak now in Jesus' name. Amen. 
one of the most powerful stories in scripture is when the mantle was passed from Moses to Joshua. This was no easy fate for Moses had 2 million people following him. You didn't hear what I said. Some scholars say 2 million people were following Moses. But Moses sinned, like we all do. But this particular thing kept him out of the promised land. Don't ask me how God came to that conclusion, because I'm not God. Uh -huh. And I don't want anyone to try to figure out sins that would keep you out of the kingdom. Because I learned a long time ago, it is not your sins that will keep you out of the kingdom. It's your attitude towards God. I'm pausing for effect. And so what happened in this story is that Joshua takes over from Moses. And I'm going to say something, and everyone my age and above are going to get, is they're going to get mad with me, but I'm going to say it anyway, because uh -huh, I don't mind, because I don't preach for people. I preach because God's kingdom needs to be populated. So watch this. And it's so powerful. Sometimes, as older people, we get in the way. God has to lay a generation to rest in order for the church to progress. I'll go again. I'll go again. Sometimes God has to lay a generation to rest in order for the church to progress. Yeah. yeah. And I'm saying that because I know, like my mom, oh Lord, my mother, she would never come on here and listen to me preach because she thinks I'm crazy. She tell me I'm, I don't even sound Adventist. My mom, you know, she, 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 I don't have a shirt and tie. She gonna struggle with what I'm wearing tonight. You know, my sisters, they got her earrings on and my mom has a fit that they're not going to go to the kingdom because of their earrings. And, and mom goes on and on and on. I went to see her last night. I was driving back. I told you guys when I came back to mom, mom's Wi-Fi went out and all she had to do was press the reset button. But she called me and she said, I need to come and press the button. I drove from Watford to Brixton to press the button for mom so she can have a TV to watch the Hope Channel. Now, now I pressed the button and I said, mom, I'm not happy with this situation. And then she replied and said, I'm your mother boy. And then I realized that there is no way I'm going to win in this battle. So I just had to bow my head, say a prayer for her and get back in my car and drive so I could preach to you guys last night. What am I trying to say? I'm saying, and nothing against my mom, she's going to be the first in the kingdom. Hallelujah. She's living up to what she knows and what she believes. But I'm suggesting we got a generation of young people, hallelujah, that will be further along sometimes if some of us would just get out of the way. Because many of us think that the church is ours, the leadership is ours, and guess what? And everything in the scripture, we have an interpretation for. I came by here to tell you, the church is ours. The scripture belongs to God. Come on now. And whether we like it or not, this next generation, I believe, will usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, let's move one step further in the text. And so Joshua now, hey, takes over. He got three problems. How many problems? He got three problems. And the three problems he has is these. One, he's taken over from a great leader. Secondly, he's got to cross the Jordan. And thirdly, Jericho walls must come tumbling down. Three problems. And each one of them needs God in order to pull it off. I'm suggesting, brethren, whether we like it or not, that one of the biggest obstacles Joshua had was fear. Fear he wouldn't be like Moses. Fear he wouldn't be able to cross the Jordan. And fear he couldn't take down the Jericho walls. So here I am. I'm in Gambia. They were looking for a Protestant preacher to go to Gambia because they were changing the name of the island where the slaves were from Jeffrey Island to Kunta Kinte Island. And so they selected me. I don't know how and I don't know why. But the ticket came and I got on the plane. Come on, say amen. Amen. And I got on the plane, I landed there myself and a Muslim Iman, because the country is 50-50 split between Muslims and Christians. And in order to ratify anything, you need to have people of faith. That's what they believe in their constitution. So here I am, I'm getting on a plane, going to Gambia to be the, 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 the Protestant pastor that's going to pray this change into existence. 
Well, I had no idea that when I landed in Gambia, in Banjul, when I landed in Gambia, that I was going to have to take a boat mm -hmm, about an hour and a half across the ocean to the little island. Now, I'm scared in the water. I'll go again. <laughs> I am fearful. Let me use that word. I sound more like a man when I say fearful. Scared sounds like I'm in really in trouble. But I am fearful. I am terribly fearful of water because a friend of mine, when we were 10, drowned at a church camp in Cornwall. And ever since that day when we, we, we saw his body come up on the beach, um, we realized how terrifying, the, how, how bad water is. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's Pastor Des Baldo. You know Des Baldo? Mm -hmm. You know Pastor Baldo? It's his mm -hmm. son, Nicky, was the one that passed away. And it was a horrible time for us. Um, and so since that day to this, I'm, I'm terrified of water. Can't deal with it. Can't deal with it. Anyway, I'm on this boat. Now, if you know anything about Africa and their, their boats, they're not the best of boats. Now, they have big cruise liners, but this wasn't one of those. And so I'm on the boat and I'm, we're moving in, we're in the middle of the ocean. All of a sudden, the front of the boat goes down. I mean, it just goes down. Now I'm thinking Titanic. I'm thinking that we got problems going on. And I'm not, I'm thinking Jonah. Come on now. I'm thinking all this stuff in my brain. And I'm saying to God, God, look, man, you know, you have to help me out on this one. And so I'm praying. I've got a prayer warrior with me and she's praying. Hallelujah. And brethren, as we are praying, uh -huh, because what they're telling us is that we have to get off that boat. They've got a lifeboat, but it's not close. We have to jump from that boat into the lifeboat. Brethren, at this stage, I'm done. You know, God, I'm confessing my sins. I'm going to die right here, and I'm going to go to heaven. Amen. And you better make sure, God, I make it to the kingdom. Amen. Because I ain't jumping across the water into that thing. Anyway, man, let me tell you what happens. So everybody jumps off. I tell them that I'm the pastor, so I'm going to wait till everybody's off. Amen. What I was really doing was having some prayer time. Come on, say amen. I was worried. I was struggling, man, struggling. But let me tell you, man, let me tell you what happened. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. So the prayer warrior jumps and she lands in the boat. Now, my male ego at this point is in trouble because if the lady did it, who was older than I was, come on now, jumped in the air and landed in the boat, I cannot not do this. Are you hearing me? I got to make the jump and I got to land in the boat. Now you're, you're laughing at me because some of y'all, some of y'all know y'all wouldn't have jumped nowhere. Y'all would have still been on the boat now, but watch this. So when she jumped and made it, I figured there was hope. Hallelujah. And so here I am and I closed my eyes tight as I could. I don't know why, because if I miss the boat, I'm going to be in trouble. But I, I closed my eyes, man, praying all the way. And I'm in mid air. And I'm saying, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to make this boat. But you know what happened? Praise God. I believe God done took that thing. Come on now. He took me in midair and landed me in the boat. I don't believe I could jump. Brethren, if you know me, I got two flat feet at the best of time. I, I, don't, I don't do sport well. And let me tell you, man, I landed in the middle of the boat. The people started clapping and cheering. They must have seen fear on my face. I'm suggesting Joshua, one of his problems taking over from Moses was fear. Fear that if Moses struck the rock and he didn't make it, then Joshua may not make it. Fear that the, 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 Jordan, the Jordan would not be parted. And fear that Jericho walls wouldn't come tumbling down. Well, the good news is he took over from Moses and the people liked his leadership. And so now he was trusting God with all his heart and not leaning on his own understanding. And he's making his way, hallelujah. He's making his way with the people. The Jordan River is ahead. And here comes God in Joshua 1. And God tells him, wherever you plant your foot, you're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. Wherever you put your foot down, there's going to be a blessing. Man, if I was fearful and I heard a word directly from God telling me, just put your foot down and the sea will open. Put your foot down. 
down and Jericho will come tumbling down. Man, I will get excited. So Joshua now, like a Pentecostal, gets excited. Gather all the people together because he hears from God. Hallelujah. He's now on the move. Brethren, let's go. Two million people, mothers and children and dads, everybody moving together. They've got to do it together. And I came by here to tell you that I will go is a personal call, but it means that we've got to do it in unity. Hallelujah. It means that as a ministry, as a church, you've got to move together. Not uniformity where everyone wears the same and sounds the same and eats the same and acts the same and listens to the same music. Oh, no. God isn't about uniformity, but he is about unity. So watch this move. All you got to do, Joshua, is put your toe in the water. Hey, it ain't no big thing. You don't need no dams drawn on the side to hold the water back. You don't need all kind of man of military people to go in there with sandbags and keep the water away. Oh, no, Joshua, all you got to do is put your toe in the water. I came by here to tell Norwich Church tonight, God is waiting for you to put your toe in the water. Come on now. God wants you to put your toe in the waters. Anybody hear me out there? I declare your blessing is right there for you. Hallelujah. Your job is right there. Your education is right there. Your addiction can be broken. Your relationship can be mended. All you've got to do is put your toe in the water. Amen. Boy, I wish someone knew what I just said. It ain't rocket science. Mm. Following Christ is extremely simple. So they put their toe in the water and look what happens. Man, Jordan goes up on the sides and now they got dry land to walk through. Come on now. I declare if Moses parted the Red Sea, then <laughs> Joshua went one step further and parted the Jordan. Come on. In the middle of the Jordan is the Ark of the Covenant. You hear what I'm saying? Is the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is right there in the middle of the water, standing there. There's a kind of glory of God is keeping the waters separate. Hallelujah. I've sat on the Jordan River. I've been to Jordan. I've I've been in a boat on the Jordan River, and I came by here to tell you, it is not a trickle trail. Brethren, it is a massive river, separating lands and countries, separating nations. I'm talking about the Jordan River, but God was able to part it, hallelujah. And if you go there today, you will see, hallelujah, in that area, memorials to the fact that they parted the, the Jordan River. God is all powerful. I dare to say amen. They make it through the other side. Well, as you know, the greatest obstacle brings the best blessings. Come on, somebody. The greatest obstacle brings the best. You ain't had nothing. Come on now. If, 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 and it's not so much that it's the greatest. It's just that if you're struggling with a particular sin, you're struggling so hard with that sin that you your life is depending on you overcoming it. The moment you overcome it, man, you got a praise party. Come on now. You don't sit down like a lump on a log like some of you all are looking right now. You got a praise party. You know, when God supplies the car, when you didn't have a car, you got a praise party. Come on now. When you go to your bank and you expect to only be paid a thousand, but that week, God, that month, God gave you two, you have a praise party. When you're trying to get through school and your, 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 your exams are not going well, your modules, you're failing, but somehow out of nowhere, you're able to graduate with first class honors. Come on, somebody. I declare tonight that, brethren, it seems like a mountain has been moved and you can't hold back. You're like the lame man in Acts chapter 3 who jumps and praises God because he can't sit down because he was lame and now he walks again. Just before the biggest blessings comes the biggest trials. Watch what happens next. Well, God is about to take them through Jericho. If you know Jericho, you know the walls are wider than our roads. Chariots used to ride around the top. They're high. You can't even see inside of the city. They got all of the military men, the Hittites and everybody on the inside. But brethren, God, hallelujah, is stronger than any physical human uh -huh, uh -huh, kind of military force. I wish we'd know that. God is stronger than Boris and everybody else and Trump 
and Biden and all these mad people, I'm sorry, all of these folk that are out there. God is stronger than every single one of them. I love God. You all love God? I love God. I love God. And so watch this move. It gets so good, man. It gets so good. Hallelujah. Joshua does what every leader should do. When you're faced with an obstacle, one that humanly cannot be dealt with, what you ought to do is walk away from the obstacle or the problem and go and seek God. Don't focus on the problem. Hallelujah. Focus on the God who is bigger than your problems. I wish someone knew what I just said. Focus on the God who is bigger than your problems. When you give God your focus, you will overcome the lightweight. Uh -huh. I'm talking about Satan, the lightweight. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the obstacle, the lightweight that stands in front of you. So Joshua makes a way, uh, goes away from, from Jordan. I mean, sorry, from Jericho. And when he goes away from Jericho, he stands there wondering what on earth he should do. Here comes God. God never leaves you alone in the midst of your trial. He'll come into your lion's den. He'll show up in your fiery furnace. I'm talking about God. Is anybody hearing what I'm trying to say? Joshua now is faced with the biggest obstacle in his ministry. Now watch this. Here comes God. Comes with a sword drawn and stands before Joshua. Joshua is, is it falls to the floor because of the brightness of the light. And the conversation goes like this. Are you for us or are you for the adversary? That's what Joshua says to Jesus. Jesus responds to him. Hey, Joshua, I am the captain of the Lord's host. In other words, I didn't come to fight against you. No, I came to stand with you. And I came to bring you good news. Before he could finish the sentence, Joshua fell down on his feet, on his knees, and started worshiping God. I declare the way to get through your obstacles is to begin to worship. Worship your way out of trials. Worship your way through uh, financial difficulty. Worship your way through your, 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 your lack of spiritual growth. I came by here to tell you that God is moved by our, our worship. Hallelujah. The reason why God created us was so that we could worship him falls to his knees and boy he starts to worship God and God now Jesus now tells him the story he says you're going to go out there and you're going to be silent for seven days hallelujah and you're going to march around that city and on the seventh day you're going to shout I wish someone knew what I was talking about that's why I can't keep quiet in church because you all you know you all didn't read the text too well I read this one and this one told me I'm allowed to shout is anybody here I, I don't mean every week I don't mean every time but when the rubber meets the road and there is a sacrificial move that needs to be made and need to be able to shout. Brethren, you didn't hear me. Sometimes I, I, I can't do it in church because of how, how nice the members are and how, you know, dignified they are. So every now and then I go and I, I, I do my little jig and I say amen and I say, you know, safely through another week, God has taken me through the way. Amen. I do the Sabbath thing. But when I go home after, after I finish preaching and I close my door, hallelujah, me and God have a shout in time. Brethren, I don't dance in church, but I got to dance I do in my house. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? I'm suggesting to you, hallelujah, that when God has given you good news, that Jericho is going to be yours, you better be able to celebrate. So now watch this. It gets good. It gets so good, man. Hey, it gets so good. Watch this. I'm, I'm going to laugh all by myself. Yo, hang with me. I'm going to do my thing. What happens next is this. Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no noise. Prayer meeting, no noise. Friday, youth meeting, no noise. Mom and dad can't argue because God said no noise. Children can't fuss. The bullies can't do bullying because God says no noise. If we're going to accomplish Jericho coming down, we have to do it God's way and not our way. It's not about your educational pursuits and your educational expertise. Oh, no. It's about doing it God's way. 
because there, if, if it was about expertise, they would have came in with bulldozers. They would have came in with cranes. Come on now. They would have came in with bombs and, and explosions to explode it from the inside out. But because God is in charge, hallelujah, all they had to do was keep quiet for seven days and then on the last day shout. Now I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to tell you for free. When you sacrifice the way they sacrificed, uh -huh, expect a miracle to happen. Watch this. Anybody could have fast from food, but you try to fast from noise. No radio, no TV, no phone. Are you hearing me? No iPad, no Zoom. That's a real sacrifice. So what they did is they kept everything inside. And on the seventh day, they marched around seven times. Always speak on it, smiling. speak on it, Pastor. Yes. They marched around seven times. Yes. The Shekinah glory of God went in the front. That every instrument from drums to guitars to you name it, they had all the people with the instruments. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? They're moving together with the spirit of God and with the word of God. They're literally standing on God's word. And now the people in Jericho are looking at this mad set of people. They don't look right. They're marching instead of fighting. They don't look like they can accomplish much. But with God on their side, hallelujah, the walls will come down. And so watch the move now. On the seventh day, after being silent for six days, they march round seven times. Out on the sixth time, there's not even a crack in the wall. You would expect that something would be happening in order for the wall to come down. But God said seven. Well, on the seventh time, hallelujah, as they got to the end of the seventh time, man, the horn started blowing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The instruments kicked in and man, they started shouting. I don't know what they shouted. Some probably shout, come on, Holy Ghost. Somebody else, your Lord, take the walls down. Somebody just said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I don't know what they said, but all I know is they shouted. And when they shouted together with one voice, hallelujah, the walls came tumbling down. God, strengthen me and I will go. God, strengthen me to cross the Jordan. Strengthen me to cross the Red Sea. Amen, I mean, the amen, Jordan amen. River. Strengthen me that Jericho walls will come, down, come, come tumbling down. Strengthen me so that I'm willing to sacrifice for you. Strengthen me, God. The walls came down. And like it says in Joshua 1, God kept his promise. Hallelujah. They are supposed to be in the promised land. And they got to where God told them they were going to get. The question I have for you is, are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Or are you just in love where you're at right now? In your nice wilderness experience, where you sit in the wilderness because your forefathers did the same thing, and you don't want to cross the Jordan because it's too complicated and too much work, and you definitely don't want to go through Jericho because the walls look too big. Fear is gripping us as a church and as a nation. People are scared to even go outside, even when lockdown is out, off, because they're scared. This pandemic has now raised a generation of fearful people, fearful to hug, fearful to hold, fearful to smile, fearful to look excited, fearful because they're not sure about what the future has. But brethren, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. God has given us, brethren, and let me say this, and I'm done. Perfect love cast away all fear. Where was love made? Love was made at Calvary. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. I declare that the vaccine we need to be getting tonight, hallelujah, should be made in the, in the, in the incubations, in the annals, in the test tubes of Calvary. Come on now. Amen. Yeah, the blood of Jesus is what's needed because that's where love is shown. Is anybody hear what I'm trying to say? Some of us have gone and got two vaccines right now. Brethren, I wish we would just get the first one. Come on now. The one that was made at Calvary. That one that was made at Calvary. That one that cast away all fear because perfect love cast out all fear. 
And so I came by here now to tell you, I got the vaccine. Hey, it wasn't done by Oxford and it wasn't done by the other folk. No, this was done by Jesus. I got the vaccine. You only hear what I'm trying to say. I got the vaccine and I refuse to operate on fear when God has given me faith. I will go. Strengthen me. I will go. Lead me. I will go. Heal me. I will go. Set me free. Amen. I will go. Forgive me. Mm. I will go. I will go. I will go. The question I have for you is, are you ready to go? Six days we preached. Now the question is, are you ready to watch Jericho walls come tumbling down? Amen. Have you got an extra shout in you? I know time is gone, but let me just say this. My mom used to wash my shirts back in the day. And they came out with a new detergent. And this detergent was called Shout. Don't know if you heard of it. Mm -hmm. It was Shout. And on the mm -hmm. TV, it was back in the 70s, it used to say, shout it out. Shout it out. And so my mom, you know, I was one of these crazy people. My school uniform, the shirt used to be real black when I took it off. And mom used to apply Shout to that dirt. Come on now. Before she put it in the detergent. And man, she used to let it soak in the shout. You hear what I'm trying to say? She used to let it soak in the shout so that the dirt will lift off. Oh, I wish someone knew what I was saying. So that the dirt would lift off. And then mom would put it down in a, in a little daz. You don't know nothing about daz. You all know Ariel and Bold and everything. But now the thing was called daz. And mom would drop it in the daz. And then it would spin and it would do all the rest of it. And the roughest spin was the last spin. Come on, now. it was the hardest spin. Our whole house would be shaking be with that <laughs> final spin. The whole thing would be shaking. And then, man, when mom took out my shirt and I looked at my shirt, the color was white because mom applied shout. I'm suggesting tonight that therapists tell us that the re one of the ways to overcome issues in our lives is to shout. When a weightlifter is lifting weights and he gets it to his chest, sometimes in order to take it to the top, he's got to shout. You hear them grunting. You hear them groaning. You hear them shouting. Ah, they take it higher. I declare tonight that some of God's people have forgotten how to shout. Shout the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Like a fragrance yes. after the rain. Kings yes. and kingdoms may all pass away, but mm. there's something about that name. Come Take on. the name of Jesus mm. with yes. you. God of sorrow and yes. of woe. He mm. will joy and comfort mm. give you. Take his name wherever you go. Precious mm. name. Oh, how sweet mm. touch. Shout in the morning and Amen. shout at Amen. noon and shout in the evening Amen. and shout in your car and shout when you're driving and shout when you're at school. When the obstacles get too tough, shout. Amen. Cry out to God yes. with a voice of triumph and watch your walls come down. Oh, Heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. I'm done. Praise and God. We are thinking about. I will go. Somebody in this room tonight, the Zoom thing, Lord, they need to accept you. And so tonight, if you are struggling with your spiritual life, or if you've never accepted Christ, and you want to say, preacher, pray for me. I need to learn how to shout again, or I need to learn how to shout. I need my Jordan River party. I need my Jericho wall come tumbling down. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in the chat right now. Raise your hand. Go to participation and raise your hand and put it on your screen right now. Right now. You're saying, I've never accepted Christ. or oh, I have, but my spiritual life isn't where it should be. And I really want to learn more about God. And I want to accept Christ into my life in a deeper way. If that is you, put that hand in the chat. Heavenly Father, you've seen the hands that were raised. And the hands are telling us and telling you that there is work to do. The week of prayer is over, but there's work to do. The good news is, Lord, is that you are willing to do the work with us and for us. All we've got to do is to surrender our all to you. 
So Amen. Lord, Amen. be with those that have raised their hands. Then there may be those that have Jordan rivers in front of them. The week ahead is not good. Relationships are in a bad way. I'm going to ask you to go to reaction and put a thumbs up in that window. That signifies that you're asking for prayer because you're fighting for your life, addictions, difficulties. The week ahead looks tough. Remember that you need God to do something extraordinary. And then you're a young person now. A final appeal. Final appeal is for that young person. That young person that is out there doing things they know they shouldn't do, but right now they've heard a word and they want to be bold and say, you know what, preacher, I need prayer right now. If that is you, go to the reaction, I think it is, or participation, and put in your window, put in your window, the clap hand signifies that you are saying, God, come into my place. Put that in your way. Father, I've already prayed for the raised hand. So, Lord, I want to pray for those who placed a reaction thumbs up. Lord, they need your help even now. I invite you to go divinely close to them. Move in their lives and part their Jordans in Jesus' name. And then, Lord, that individual, that one that needs a Jericho wall coming tumbling down, that young person that's in the midst of difficulties and they got walls all around them, but tonight they want to be set free. Lord, go where they are right now in Jesus' name and set them free. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the week that we've had together. And Lord, we leave this church, its leadership, its young people with you. Continue to bless them. Continue to watch over them. And most of all, continue to supply all of their needs so when you come back a second time, they'll be ready and waiting to meet you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. And we're just gonna we're just gonna stay there in prayer for a second. Um, this.